I know some of you are, like me, fans of the TV show The West Wing. It aired quite a long time ago now. It was a drama series on American TV that became very successful around the world following the fortunes of an American president and his team of uh, backroom staff and their relationships and their political manoeuvrings and is it's a show that holds a very fond place in the hearts of quite a few of us. And one of the things that the president in that show says a few times, more than a few times in fact, is what's next? It's his verbal signal to himself and to his team that he's ready to move on to what's next. It can be in the light of a success that the team has just had. It can be in the light of a defeat or a failure that the team has just had. Either way, the point of that those two words is to emphasise that the work is never done and the story is never completely told. There's always another thing to look onto, ready to take his team's attention. And it's something of an idea that has been helpful to a few of us, including myself. And it's a phrase that has come back to me over the last few days as I've been thinking and praying and reflecting on our situation, our personal situation, as well as us as a church as we and those around us as we continue to live through the lockdown and the pandemic with all the uncertainty that brings with it. We've been living with this pandemic for, for several weeks now here in South Africa, and we have moved to a point where we have been come almost used to the idea of lockdown. But the reality is we do not know what is next, what the next thing is. We don't know how long we'll be at the level four of the lockdown as we are at the moment. And we don't know what life is going to look like when all this is done. But as well as dealing with the present situation, and we must never take our eyes off the present situation, we need to start giving thought to what is next. There's of course so much we don't know. Financially, a lot of us individually and as a church and many businesses will feel the impact of this for years to come. We don't know what state of health many of us will be in. And so much more remains unknown. We can't claim to predict the future with any certainty. But we do need to start thinking about what's next. Because what's next will be the place that we are called to as a church and as individuals. And I think a companion for the beginning of that process will be Abram, Abraham, who was called by God in Genesis 12 to leave everything that had become familiar to him and go to a nation that God would show him. The Lord God said to Abram, go from your country, your people and your father's household to the land I will show you. And I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So God says to Abram, and Abram goes to this new place. And in doing so, Abram faces a decision. And we'll see that decision over the next few weeks as being one that involves what of his himself, of his of himself in the country that was so familiar to him before he left, does he take with him? And what will he embrace as new in a new country he does not yet know? And that will be a journey that we go on with Abraham as we start this process of considering what's next for us as individuals and as a church. It doesn't mean that we can't continue to find things difficult in the present, or do what is needed in the present, whether it's the microsite that's operating at the church, or whether we need to mourn a loss of some sort in the present. And the reality is many of us will move between those stages all the time. And that's why we have the body of the church, so 
some of us who are less affected in the present moment can think about what's next, while well, others of us need to mourn and be present fully in the reality of the moment. And we all shift between those positions. But I invite you, with me, to start prayerfully considering what's next for us as individuals and as a church. What do we want to bring with us from what we knew as a church and as individuals before all this started? And what will we leave and recreate and remake with God's guidance and in God's power in the new land which he is leading us to? He doesn't promise it will be easy. We can't promise we won't make mistakes because Abram sure did. You know the story well enough, I'm sure, to know that. But the call of God is always to consider, as well as the lilies of the field and the moment in front of us, What's next? What am I, God, calling you to leave behind and to embrace in the future? And what am I calling you to take with you into that future? I'm not saying this with any agenda or really awareness of what the answers to those questions will be, but I invite us to journey and discuss and think and pray and read scripture and listen to talks and worship together as we seek to begin a process of discerning that. So, as we enter this journey, St. Peter's, may we be those who hear the call of God to go, who are obedient, who take with us only that which is needed, and to embrace what's next with faith and trust in the only good and true God.